This species of small butterfly right here is called a three-spotted skipper. One of the best ways to identify it is not only the spots running down the bottom wing, but also the three spots on the top wing. This bird right here is a purple gallinule. It's a relatively medium-sized to large rail species, and you can see that purple and blue and green color on it. Once it starts walking around and wagging that tail, well, it's right next to a common gallinule in this shot. But once it starts wagging its tail around, you could see that bright white patch underneath the tail. This individual right here of the purple gallinule is younger and lacking those bright purple and blue colors, but you could still see the white patch underneath the tail. There are a bunch of peninsula cooters basking in this area, as well as one Florida softshell turtle. Even though the blue tilapia is an invasive species from Africa here in Florida, that coloration along with the fins make it one of the more elegant looking species of fish we get here. You can barely see this gar. That was cool. There it goes swimming farther away. Florida gar is a species that almost never comes this far out of the open and almost never stays this still, but in this shot you can see the beautiful spotting pattern, as well as the odd shaped teeth and the odd shaped mouth. Very strange primitive fish. This right here is a very exciting lifer for me, the evening skimmer. The best way to identify this is the orange colored spots on the bottom wings, but besides that, this dragonfly is just a drab brown color. The phantom darner is a very large dragonfly, but still on the smaller side for the darner family. The color patterning of green stripes on a dark brown, almost black base is actually very similar to many other species of darner as well. The most similar species color pattern wise is the regal darner. So the best way to tell the difference between these two is tail width. The segments of the tail on regal darner remain the same width the whole way through whereas the waist of the phantom darner looks to be almost pinched. It's thinner than the bottom. This species right here almost never lands, and this is one of my first times ever getting a good view of this species, the wandering glider, which is a great reason why it would be called that. This species is pretty common here, but still really cool to look at, the metallic pennant. You can tell it's named that because you can see that steel blue color metallic color on the abdomen and the thorax and the head. This is actually a very rare species and a lifer for me, the sepia basket tail. It has a shorter and thicker tail than most other basket tail species. Even though the color saturation was very bad in the video, this picture here shows the very distinctive coloration of the male sepia basket tail. Both the tail shape and the presence of orange on both the top and bottom of the tail prove this idea of this exciting rarity for me. This is an odd looking saddlebags. Either an Antillian or Vermilion, I'll have to check later. Just from the field observation, I was able to tell that what I had was a rarity, either a Vermilion or Antillian saddlebags, both rare where I live, based on the limited dark red coloration on the wings. What the arrow is pointing to is the reason I was able to tell this is an Antillian saddlebags, the purplish blue spot on the fronds area, which would be red in Vermilion saddlebags. This makes the sighting even more exciting, since Antillian Saddlebags is potentially a Palm Beach County first. This picture is worse in overall quality, but still shows a better angle of that bluish purple patch on the fronds area.